Howdy. Now, from time to time, you know I like to talk about products, and you know that I go out shopping, and I've been looking at, uh, you know, these, these, oh my goodness, the nutritional facts and, and, and such. And I'm always looking at how you buy things and the economy of scale and trying to find the best buy. And I'm going to show you something that I think is very interesting because it kind of points something out that everything isn't always what it seems to be. So anyway, I showed you this here. This is basically Kool-Aid cherry flavor. Little tiny thing, you know, look at this, you know, that even really fit in my hand all that well. But this little tiny thing is sugar free. And I've been buying this for probably a year now. As a matter of fact, I did a video last year where I compared this to some other flavor that I didn't like, but I ended up loving this. Cherry Kool-Aid. I discovered Cherry Kool-Aid back in 1997 and I've loved it, but I'd given it up because of, you know, how much sugar I was putting in it, which kind of helped me to speed up the onset of diabetes and such. So I'd given it up, but found some sugar-free drink that I could put in water. I could carry it with me. Wonderful stuff. The thing is, you see how tiny it is. Basically, I can only get five of my cups of Kool-Aid out of it. Now, I know you're saying, wait, just five cups? This is the size of a cup. This is a 52-ounce cup. Now, I'm one of those people who likes my stuff really cold, so I pack it with ice pretty much all the way to the top, put the water in it. So most probably I'm getting about maybe, you know, truly 32 to 40 ounces of water, which is about four to five cups of water in here. So anyway, I can usually get five cups out of this. Now, I'm at the store the other day, and I come across this. Notice the difference in size in this. So I see this, I said, oh my goodness, really? Let's check this out. Now, this one actually does have sugar in it. It's got sugar, it's got that high fructose corn syrup that some people rail about and whatever, but it's got less sugar in it than the other stuff that I used to buy. You know, I used to buy the granulated mix. So it already tells you it's got less sugar in it. And I went ahead and I bought it because this bad boy was $2.99 and this bad boy is $2.59, right? So I'm thinking, oh, wow, I'll get a lot more out of this than I will this. That was That's what my thinking was. So I bring this stuff home and the first one I do, I need to put enough in there to I get it to where I like it and oh my goodness, it tasted wonderful. But I looked at the bottle and I said, whoa, how much of this did I use? So I started kind of doing some calculations. And you want to know a truth. It takes a lot more of this stuff to get the Kool-Aid to the flavor than it takes this to get it to the, you know, the way I like to taste it. And so I said, well, what's that about? And so I did some calculations. This little bad boy here on the bottle says that you can get the equivalent of 24 8 ounces out of uh, let's see 24 servings out of 8 cups so in other words you know 8 cups equals 24 servings this thing here says that you can get 6 quarts out of it now here's the math the math is that a quart is 8 ounces of liquid so I did the math. This here says I can get 24 cups. So I did 8 times 24 when I came to as 192 fluid ounces. Then I did this. 4 cups equals 32 ounces. And basically it says, you know, okay, I can get 6 quarts. So I did the math. So I did 32 times 6. It comes to 192 fluid ounces. So... Out of both of these, if I use the exact same amount, if I use the amount that they recommend, I get the exact same number of cups of water or Kool-Aid. Are you kidding me? Now, here's the thing. If this measurement was proper, then at least I could say, oh, I've got an equal thing. But it's not. I need to use more of this to get the flavor than I do this. So I'm already getting less 
out of this. Now, here's number two. This here is 259. This here is 299. So when you look at the thing, I don't know if you folks do this, but I do this all the time. I look at price of by fluid ounce for a lot of different items. And I've recognized that sometimes something that's smaller offers you a smaller price and everything because what grocery stores do is that they usually base the price based off of what sells better. So I did this with the Crystal Light a long time ago where it turned out that if you bought the four pack, of crystal light as opposed to the six pack and you ended up buying the same number so you ended up with the same number of, of, of little packets or whatever you actually saved money buying the four pack than you did the six pack your mind says oh I'm buying six at a time they'll discount that so I'll pay less it doesn't work that way it just doesn't work that way so in this case 299 versus 259 sugar free versus sugar zero calories versus at least 160 calories to make a pitcher which is this so at least 160 to 200 calories every time I use the other stuff to make drink now the reason I'm pointing this out is because there are a lot of people who sometimes look at something and you think bigger is better and sometimes bigger is better or you think newer is better but we don't really sometimes tend to really dig deep and figure things out. And in this case, I feel like I've been scammed. I, you know, I didn't do the calculation in the store because, my God, are you serious? I saw this and I saw this and I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm going to get twice as many servings out of this than I'm going to get out of the other one. And it just doesn't work that way. There must be something about sucralose. This has a little bit of sucralose, by the way, this thing here. They put a little bit of sucralose in it so that they can say that it's less sugar. And I looked that up, you know. But this here is just sweetened by sucralose. So, this is how they fool you. Now, let's equate this to a lot of other things. You know, there's some people who, and I'm not going to call anyone out because I don't want to look like one of those kind of people. But there are some folks who are writing things on their different blogs or putting things up on social media that aren't necessarily of the quality that a lot of other people do. And what they're doing is they're packing these blogs with five to 8,000 word posts. And everyone is now saying that that's the way to go, that search engines want to see these big epic posts that tell all this stuff because they see that as authority. And you know what I see for the most part? I see people writing this stuff, they're, they're repeating over and over the exact same thing in their post. Or they're just like, like pounding it in with these things, these examples that mean nothing. Now, there are some people who are writing some extremely good posts. I, I have to say that. There are some folks who are putting together 5,000 po 5, word posts that are epic. They are wonderful. You know, you just want to give them a little applause. But that ain't the majority. And yet, there's all these recommendations lately saying, write longer posts, write longer posts. Well, you know what? I am one of the progenit progenitors of the long post. But you know what a long post used to be? Between 1,000 and 2,000 words. You know, I've always said that I write until I'm done. So I start with my premise. If my premise ends at 450 words, I'm done. If my premise ends at 2,000, then I'm done. But I don't intentionally set out to write something overly long. I just don't do it. Unless it's a research post or unless it's a step-by-step -step how you do something. Because when I write a step-by-step, -step, I'm not leaving anything out. One of the gripes I have with a lot of people who write step-by-step -step posts is that they leave stuff out. And you get these gaps. And that's an old blogging trick as well. People say if you give everything away, no one has anything to ask you. Oh, please, don't give me that mess. <laughs> I hate that. But... Volume does not necessarily always equate to better. It just doesn't. So when I see people ask, well, how many words should my blog post be? My answer has always been, it should be as long as it needs to be. If it only needs to be 300 words, then it's 300 words. If it needs to be two, 3,000, then it needs to be two or 3,000. But don't keep putting words in just because someone told you that more words in a post is better. Life just doesn't work that way. No one wants to read that. 
Which one of these is better? You know what? This one now all of a sudden turns out to be more cost beneficial, I will say. That's what I'm saying. So, what do you think? You know, tell me about cost, pricing things out, but also tell me about this little thing about long posts versus short posts. Have you been trying to read some long posts? Like I said, I'm not a hater of long posts. I am one of those people who hates this. Let me just throw these words in here because I want a post to be really long. Remember that. I bet, you know, there's a lot of people here who used to try to write those papers in school where you had to write a thousand word paper. And so basically you had four strong paragraphs and you spent three pages trying to reword those paragraphs <laughs> to get your stuff done. Come on, own up to it. You know you did it. I didn't ever have to do that. Matter of fact, my papers are almost always way too long. But that's how it works sometimes. But let me know your thoughts on this. You know who I am. Y'all take care. Hope you enjoy this video.